Okay, cool. So I've got my laptop um, and I am going to go through um, my personal statement. Obviously it goes without saying, I'm by no means an expert on personal statements, um, but this is the personal statement that I used when I was applying and I got three offers. Okay, so obviously your personal statement is 4,000 characters or less which actually isn't very many words. It's probably about a page of writing. So it's really important that you are straight to the point and you're not doing any waffle like I'm doing now when I'm talking. You're just selling yourself and you're really blowing your own trumpet basically. So your first paragraph has to be pretty catchy. Like, let's be honest, how many personal statements is that admissions tutor gonna be reading? Like so many. So you have to find a way to stand out. So here goes. Please bear with the cringe um, and please don't hate me for how cringe I was. How do doctors make people better and how do they make a difference? The questions I often wondered as a child. Dealing with complex situations and having the expertise to help patients and families understand the impact of clinical decisions and leading them to the best outcome is a challenge that motivates me to study medicine. I feel drawn to a profession that will enable me to make a difference and improve the quality of people's lives. Right, let's just break this down a bit. So the first line is pretty cringe, but it is true to be fair. Yeah, I don't know in hindsight whether that was a great first line, but I actually do like the second line. I like the dealing with complex situations and having the expertise to help the patients understand the impact of clinical decisions and leading them to the best outcome because that's hinting at patient autonomy and that ultimately patients can decide whether they want a treatment or not, but you're just giving them all the information so that they can make the decision which will lead them to the best outcome, hopefully. So I really like that, even if I say so myself. I feel drawn to a profession. I think that's okay. Please don't use the word like passion, but what I don't like is that I say, make a difference. I say that in the first paragraph. I think there are so many other ways to express this. Even if I just said, I feel drawn to a profession that will enable me to improve the quality of people's lives because, you know, that, you know, relays that you're making a difference. That basically means that you just don't need to say that. So I think in the first paragraph, you need to include why you want to study medicine. I think that's the most important thing to include. Studying and practicing medicine is demanding, but I am enthusiastic about working in a field where new advances and developments are always being made. Okay, that's good. So I've covered kind of two things that it's a demanding job, but also that we always have to learn and we're adapting because of new drugs, new technology. Okay, fair enough, Tash. I enjoy expanding my knowledge of a subject and developing my skills, so I am adaptable and can think on my feet to work out a problem. I don't know whether I like that line that much, to be honest. One of my main motivations for studying medicine came from visiting my grandma with dementia. I improved her day by talking and listening to her in an understanding manner. I am compassionate about helping and caring for people and will always go out of my way to try and provide the best possible care to my patients alongside my team. Okay, so there were massive elements of cringe in there and I said the word compassionate, which is basically passionate. Um, but I mentioned, it's like the small things that you mentioned, which are really big things. So I mentioned um, alongside my team. So I'm hinting at the multidisciplinary team, which is really, really good to talk about. Um, I say I improved her day by talking and listening. So I'm showing that listening is a core um, quality that a doctor should have. And it's something that I have. I said I will always go out of my way to provide the best possible care. So I'm caring, maybe. So yeah, I, I do hit at some core qualities there in that paragraph. I hit 
I know I understand what the job involves. I understand it's demanding. I'm enthusiastic. I like that there's new advances and developments. I'm adaptable. Um, I'm a quick thinker. I can think on my feet. Um, listener, I can talk, I can care, and I can work alongside members of the team. So I think I got sort of eight qualities in that paragraph. So that's kind of what you want to be doing. Whilst volunteering weekly for over 13 months on a cardiology ward, my communication skills have developed. Maybe I could expand on how, what communication skills I actually got, but okay. Helping with the tea round and listening to patients when they want to have a chat has been valuable. I realise the importance of understanding that every patient has different needs requiring empathy and the best possible care and that decisions need to be made in their best interest. Okay, so I'm hitting at another sort of like eth the ethical principles there with decisions need to be made in their best interest. Um, I hint at every patient is different. So, you know, implying we're not just treating diseases, we're treating the patient as a whole. Yeah, I mean, so far it's, it's all right. It's a bit wordy for how much I'm actually including. Um, okay, the next part of the same paragraph is, I believe that patient-centered care is vital and I have observed the way the whole team from healthcare assistants to consultants meet the need of patients. So I think that's really good. I really like that. So I'm hinting that about expanding on the fact that patients are individuals and we need to tailor our care to each individual. And that's really how medicine is working these days. Um, it's definitely not a one size fits all approach. We need to really take on board the individual's lifestyle. You know, some drugs may not be appropriate. Um, you know, even if someone has a physical health complaint, we need to think about their mental health, how that might affect their well-being and their mood. Um, and I really like, again, how I said I observed the way that the whole team did that, because I think sometimes when you do work experience, you just kind of watch the doctor. But I here am saying that I watched everybody from healthcare assistants to consultants. So I think that's quite important. Okay, then finally, the last sentence of this paragraph is, determining the best way to improve the quality of life is only possible when everyone communicates effectively and respects each other. So I really, really like that. Obviously, one of the core principles of the NHS is respect and equality. Um, and I think that I threw that in with communicating and respecting because, you know, it's one thing to sort of listen to someone's opinion and then it's another thing to be like well you're wrong so you need the combination of communicating so listening and talking and respecting each other's opinions and beliefs and what they've got to say basically okay so all in all it's getting slightly less cringy so i'm getting it's a bit better now i think there was a bit of unnecessary cringe at the start and sort of even mentioning about my grandma with dementia i, I don't know i don't know if that was important Trust and empathy between patients and medical staff are essential. The strong relationship between a GP and patients became evident when I shadowed a GP. I understand the importance of a GP as the first point of patient contact. I found it exciting not knowing what the problem the doctor would be challenged by with every new patient. It made me appreciate the importance of always listening to your patient as ultimately every decision is theirs and you can only offer your best advice. I think this is really good, actually. I think I've, you know, one, not many sort of people going into medical school um, or even medical students find GP actually exciting and realise how important it is. Um, and I clearly really picked up on that. You know, even if I'd done this GP work experience and... I realised it wasn't for me. The fact that I'm still picking up on the core parts of GP is really good. Um, I think especially sort of how the NHS is adapting now and the lack of GPs. I think, you know, not that you have to do work experience in the GP and not that that's going to get you into medical school, but I personally believe that that was quite a good thing to get in and the fact that I did do work experience in the GP. Um, yeah, I brought up some good things there. GP as the first point of patient contact. Um, exciting, not knowing what was going to come in. 
Um, every decision is the patient's and you can only offer your best advice. Um, it's challenging as each new patient comes in. Um, the strong relationship, um, the trust and empathy is essential. You know, patients are coming to you. They may not have never met you as a doctor before and they might be sharing something really personal to them. You know, it might be mental health. It might be something to do with their sexual health. Um, so that the fact that they trust you and you build rapport within sort of the first 30 seconds to a minute of that consultation is so important. You know, otherwise they just wouldn't feel com confident or comfortable opening up to you. Ooh, this is quite good. Although empathy is vital, being able to put your own emotions to one side for the benefit of the patient and sometimes their close relatives is equally important. This allows for the patient's confidence and trust to, de to develop. I had first-hand experience of this while watching a caesarean section in Tanzania when the lady giving birth gripped onto my hand and I had to put my nerves to one side so that I could comfort and reassure her. So see how I'm like linking my work experience in a way that's linking to um, key principles that it's needed to have as a doctor. So I'm not just saying I did work experience in Tanzania, I went to a hospital. I saw this, this, that and that. I learned this, that and that. I'm really linking what skills, what core skills are needed to have as a doctor and how that I learned that and sort of ways that show that I have some of these um, skills or at least I've started thinking about how I can develop those. Um, I think this one's really important. I think this is hinting at doctors needing to look after themselves and sometimes you know, we have to try and not get invested too much in each patient. Um, yeah, I quite like this. I think it was a bit different because obviously everyone just bangs on about empathy, empathy, empathy. But, you know, actually we need to try and be sort of strong for our patients at times. OK. Then sort of swiftly moving on. So actually, that's all I talk about my work experience. So you can really see that, you know, I've mentioned that I did a work experience at GP that I did work experience in a hospital in Tanzania and I did like I volunteered in a hospital in the UK so I've done three bits that I've included a bit it hasn't been like listy like I did this I did that I went here I did that you actually don't know too much about what I did on that work experience you just found out what I learned from it which is what it's all about reflecting on those work experiences Okay, moving on. As a good team player, mm, I don't really like that. Anyway, carry on, Tash. I led a group of singers to perform a song a cappella, which has helped me to improve my leadership and organisation skills. So again, it's kind of giving an, giving an example of how you have those skills necessary to be a doctor. Listening to others is key to establishing good relationships with your colleagues. In Tanzania, I offered community help to orphanages and interacted with the children to paint some of the dilapidated outside walls. This allowed me to teach them how to paint, adapting my communication skills to suit a younger person. Yeah, I do quite like that. It's a bit descriptive. Just what I've said you don't need to do, like painting the walls and stuff. It's a bit just, I don't know, because I guess I do like how I said tailored my communication skills to um, talk to someone younger, because that is super important. You know, as a GP, as any doctor, you're going to, even as a junior doctor, you're probably going to work with children. You're probably going to work with middle aged people. You're probably going to work with sort of elderly patients at some point. And even different patients, the same age group, you might have to um, tailor how you explain things, um, tailor how much information they want. So adapting to um, the patient is really important, which I think I'm trying to hint at here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I just used the P word. I am passionate. Oh, gosh. No. No. Anything but passionate. Just don't do it. Why did I do it? I am passionate about singing and performing and recently gained a diploma in musical theatre. I have performed as a member of the choirs at my school for over five years and in West Side Story as a member of the Bristol Musical Youth Production. Balancing studying for GCSEs with 
with rehearsals was challenging but I learned that I work well when under pressure so okay even though this is a bit cringy and it's a bit like I've got this I've got that I've got a diploma I sing in choirs blah 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 you know you do need an element of that it is awkward like talking about yourself in that way but the fact is I've linked it guess what into core principles <laughs> I can't think how many times I've said this into core principles and skills that you need as a doctor so I now have said um, I work well under pressure and balancing studying with rehearsals. So it's balancing that work-life balance. And it's so important to show that you have that work-life balance and you have you do extra things other than just revise for your A-levels. Okay, I am a house prefect and one of my responsibilities is to mentor new students. In the house, I enjoy passing on my knowledge in a simplified manner to help the younger pupils with their homework. Okay, I quite like this. Education is quite important as a doctor. So, I mean, Kings in our third year, we even had a whole module on um, what's called the doctor as a teacher. So I like this. I'm hinting that I like teaching people, you know, as a doctor, it's so important to teach um, your patients or to educate them. Maybe that's educating them on why you're prescribing them a certain drug, how they should take it, um, educating them about their disease, um, or whether it's educating um, less experienced colleagues, you know, maybe when you're a consultant and you're educating junior doctors, um, or that when you're a medical student and you're helping someone slightly younger than you. Um, so yeah, I like that. I'm aware that being a doctor is a huge responsibility as the impact of your dis as the impact of your decisions can be life-changing. I look forward to the opportunity of making a difference to other people's lives. Mm, it's a bit sort of added cringe at the end, which I don't feel that we need, but all in all, I think I've done quite a good job at, you know, using my work experience and using my co-curricular activities to reflect on what skills I think are necessary as a doctor and how I already have some of those. So, you know, there are a few areas of this where I would definitely like to change, but maybe sort of six, seven out of 10. <laughs> um, yeah, so just to recap, what I included was I included why I wanted to be a doctor. I included my volunteering, my work experience, my co-curriculars, and within those sections, I included what I learned it's important um, to, what skills is important to have as a doctor and how I have developed some of them, how I have learned that those are important skills. So it's no good just saying, I watched a YouTube video by Tash the Medic, which told me it's important as a doctor to be a good listener. You have to work that out for yourself. You have to see firsthand. You know, I found that listening, listening was necessary um, with my grandma with dementia. So you have to show that you work that out kind of thing. As you can see, I didn't include anything academic related. I didn't talk about an EPQ. I didn't talk about a book that I read. Um, that's not necessary. You know, you can include that, but make sure that you know it inside and out. Just don't lie about anything on your personal statement. This is 100% true. Don't lie and make up your grandma has X condition. My grandma did have dementia. So yeah, just be 100% truthful and yeah. If anybody, um, if anybody would like to send me their personal statement, I will do this completely free of charge. Um, I am no expert and as you can see here, there's a lot of errors here, but I'm very willing to give it a read over and give you some constructive criticism. So thanks so much for watching this video and I guess if you've made it to here, that's your little like <laughs> present for making it to the end is that now you know that I'll read your personal statement. So feel free to send it to my email, which you'll find in the description box.